Welcome, everyone. And uh, this is the weekly We Awake worldwide meditation. So we thank you for being here. And of course, we woke up this morning over here in the United States to the knowledge that Russia had rolled in, uh, not just rolled in, rolled in shooting and bombing and firing into the Ukraine. So the dogs of war, once again, have been unleashed in Eastern Europe. And uh, yeah, it's, it's heavy and uh, it's frightening and it's very sad. People are dying as we speak over there. So, uh, appropriately enough, last week we selected a track to do today, and the track is called Depths of Peace. And it is from the album or the collection, Forgetting Not to Remember. And, and if, you, if you don't know what that means, well, it's basically the idea that most of the time people report when they have spiritual awakenings, and spiritual experiences, deep spiritual experiences, that it's more like a remembering, like something I already knew, but somehow I forgot. So when we uh, do this practices, we, we begin to forget that we didn't remember, and we remember, and we remember, and we rejoin. So, um, I suggest that we, we uh, and this, this is a 40 minute meditation. This is about twice as long as we normally do. And the fact is, is I feel like doing it twice as long this morning. So I hope you guys can hang in there with us and um, let us uh, center down in our hearts in the place where wisdom and compassion dwells. And Ask God to help us and to help our whole family wake up so we, uh, we stop doing this and uh, that we beat our uh, swords into plowshares, as it says in the Bible. And there will come a time when we won't need armies and huge militaries and uh, constant development of new and new and more destructive and more powerful weapons to invade each other or to protect ourselves from each other. And, uh, and if we're gonna survive, we're gonna have to go there. Uh, this is just not gonna work in the long term. So let's hope these are growing pains, evolutionary growing pains. And uh, evolution is amazing, but it's not pretty. So. Yeah, so let's hold that in our hearts and see if we can we can feel and bring the presence and wisdom and love and compassion of spirit and God to the situation. So, yeah, let's do this thing. God bless you guys for being here. Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. That seemed like about 15 minutes to me. It doesn't seem like 40 minutes. And um, I was praying. He's like, God, is there anything that I could say? That um, might help. And came to me, as you may or may not know, I've been involved with Vanessa and Heidi and Dr. Roger Walsh in a podcast called Deep Transformation, where we try to look like, have conversations with people that will show us the work that must be done in all the different different uh, multitudinal aspects and the complexity of, of existence. And uh, they've been very, there's something going on there and a very powerful encounter. So I would encourage everyone to, to check it out, Deep Transformation, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. And we had one of the, I think we released five, we've been working on this for three years. So we have lots of conversations that are already in the can that were releasing every uh, well today we're releasing a new one and uh, but we had had a long protracted conversation with Dr. Christopher Bache and he's a remarkable man and I'd read one of his books <coughs> wow. Dark Night Early Dawn I think it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago and it was a very uh, a very powerful volume for me, and it really helped me to understand what was emerging in my own experience with non-duality and, and uh, the things I was learning and experiencing in my life at that time. And uh, so we had a conversation with him, and he recently wrote a book called LSD in the Mind of the Universe. I believe that's the name. And uh, he did 73... Uh, very high dose sessions, we didn't call them trips, very controlled, um, controlled as far as how they were set up with, with support and, and uh, over 20 years. And uh, in that journey, he learned a lot and a lot was revealed. And it is nothing new, essentially, but it's much more granulated than uh, the, the cutting edge understanding of the cosmos that's been evolving and being, being revealed in our times through, through science and the arts and, and people's uh, spiritual encounters with the mind and the heart of the universe. Yes, that's right, the mind and the heart of the universe. And um, I took a few notes when I was uh, reading this book, and uh, I'd like to share them. It says, humanity's transformation will come about through terrible suffering. Our species will change when our collective suffering simply becomes unbearable. But without understanding the higher good that our collective suffering is bringing forward in history, we might drown in the sorrow. But the transformation lies ahead, and we must not drown. No. I think we are called to, um, to hold it, to bear it, and not to unplug ourselves and look like monks, but to accept what's going on and accept that it might get a lot worse 
before it gets better. And as Einstein said, you cannot solve current problems on the levels of consciousness in which they were created. You have to up-level it. That's a paraphrase. So the work that we do in waking up, in growing up, and cleaning our acts up inside and outside in all the domains, and all the lines, as Ken Wilbur would say, all four quadrants. may seem to be achieving very few quick results. And I had a conversation yesterday with Roger and Julia Kim, who's also a doctor, but she has been part of the Bhutanese government gross national happiness program. Basically, they're saying the wealth of a nation is not based on gross national product, just how much material can be uh, produced, but the actual happiness it is providing for its citizens. And I think they are asking the right questions. And until we begin to ask the right questions, I don't think we're gonna to come to the answers. And perhaps it is this business as usual, the denying what's going on in our economies and in the environment. Yeah. We can see around us yeah, the continuing power games of addiction for control and empire and power. Um, we're not gonna get there. What Julia said, she said what she's learned, she's a very spiritual woman too. She spent three years in a Tibetan retreat. And she says what she's learned is that we can't be attached to the outcome when we're doing the right thing, when we're doing what we've been called to do. And if we are attached to quick results, we might drown in despair. So we have to do the work. And part of this cosmology that is emerging in these conversations with Chris and Julia and others, and in my own experience, is that we're not here for just one shot, okay? We keep coming back. And uh, that all the great wisdom traditions, um, spirit traditions had that understanding, had different understandings of it. And even Christianity in the early days, there was a church father called Origen who wrote all about that. And Jesus said, uh, when John the Baptist showed up on the scene, he says, well, there's Elijah. He's back. Okay. So remember that the world that we're creating now is the world that we're going to create, inherit later. And the good that we do now, as it says in the Bible, the sins of the fathers are passed on seven generations. And uh, Native Americans have that concept also, but they also say the good that we do now is passed on for seven generations. So let us go deep, find God, understand our path, work on ourselves and do that day to day and not and walk this path that we've been given in a courageous and noble way and realize we're not alone there's a much greater power 
that is us and that is creating us, that is on our side also. So in these dark times, it's not time to, to drown in our despair, but to double down with our efforts and embrace the faith that we find in our deepest encounters with the ground of being that's worth it and the good that we do matters and uh and eventually it will bear fruit if we do not faint in our minds and our hearts so anyway thank you guys uh for being here again and uh love you Oh, you think? Thank you, gang. I wake family. All you guys. And uh, yeah. God bless. <laughs>